What is up guys, Griff here from Phalanx Gaming Legion, and we are back with another Elite Dangerous tutorial. This one will be covering core mining for beginners, with a helpful list of the ship builds in the description down below. It also includes a list of systems with icy rings so that you can get started nice and fast. One thing to note about this first build, the Adder, is it is the first ship that has a two slot as a hardpoint. So it is the first ship that allows you to equip the Seismic Charge Launcher. You cannot core mine without the Seismic Charge Launcher. Another thing to note about this build is it does not have a detailed surface scanner. So you will be shooting blindly when jumping into icy rings. But I will show you here shortly how that's still a very viable option and you can find a place within the first five jumps almost every time. Once you have your 0D pulse wave analyzer equipped, make sure you got your 3D frame shift drive, then head on over into optional internals and make sure you got it set up accordingly. What you're going for is a refinery, prospector limpet, collector limpets, fuel scoop, shield generator, and plenty of cargo space. After you get all that, head back out to the main menu and go to advanced maintenance. Make sure to pick up about 60 to 75% of your cargo capacity's worth of limpets. Then what you want to do is back out of that and go into your Navigations tab. Look for all the systems within your jump range and select one at random. Once you've done that, go ahead and leave the station and head on your way. Once you have arrived at your targeted location, go into your Navigation tab and go to System Map. If you do not see any icy ringed planets in that system, go back to navigation and select another system at random within your jump range. With any luck, you will not need to jump more than three or five times to find an icy ring. Once you arrive at a system with ringed planets in it, tab over once and pan over the planet Scroll down to see what ring type it is and make sure it says icy. Afterwards, lock onto it and then head that way. Something to note when core mining. Turn off your headlights and turn on your night vision. This will allow you to identify false positives a lot easier. Now that you're at the planet, pick a spot in the ring to dive on in. Make sure to throttle down before you hit the ring or you will damage your ship. When you drop out of Super Cruise, fly around in a circle for a bit, popping your pulse wave analyzer. If you do not see any false positives within the first two minutes, then head to another section in the ring. If you do, then you know that there's a chance of being actual positive. Distinguishing the difference between a false positive and a proper core mineable asteroid can be very difficult, but also very important. With only 16 cargo space, you have very little room for error in this adder. Once you think you've located a deep core asteroid, head towards it while hitting your pulse wave analyzer. If you notice a black checkered mark while approaching it, that's most likely a proper core, but if the color seems to dim as you get really close, then it's most likely a false positive. Just a heads up, all builds in the description are on the Coriolis app. In order to find a one-shop stop for any of the builds in this app, you need to press the dollar sign near the top. This will then take you to the EDDB website where you will find the relevant info. A thing to keep in mind about this ship build list in the description. It's based off of the material gathering of void opals, low temperature diamonds, granodite, and alexandrite. 
Anything worth less than those minerals will not net you the proper results. Now that you've found a core with the proper minerals in it, pull out the seismic charge launcher and look around the asteroid for some fissures. You'll notice the seismic charge launcher has three different stages when charging. You'll also notice that the asteroid has three different levels of fissures. My advice is to play around with these and figure out which best works for you. Personally, I like hitting the smallest fissures with the highest charge, and then moving on to the highest fissure with the lowest charge. What you're trying to go for is the optimal range when all the blocks are in the blue part of the ball, in the top right. Once the detonation yield is optimal, fly directly away from the core at least two kilometers. This will avoid damaging your ship when it blows up. After that, go into your navigation screen on the left, go into contacts and select one of the bombs. From here, you can choose to disarm it if you overcook the asteroid and want to get a better yield out of it, or detonate it now so you don't have to wait the entire time limit. After cracking that core, head towards it with your abrasion blaster and begin blasting off any minerals you see hanging on the sides of the asteroids. This would also be a good time to deploy your cargo scoop and your collector limpet. This will take a little bit to pick everything up, so feel free to pick them up manually while he does the job as well. Once your cargo hold is full of minerals, head on over to the website Inara, and then press Galaxy, then Commodities, put in the relevant material, then the Near System Search. After that, press Best Sell, and type in the relevant system in your galaxy map. After offloading all those minerals, you should have at the least around $8 million. Plenty enough to hop in the description and buy the next ship in the build list. Thank you all for watching. Hope this helps. Let me know how I did in the comments down below.